So instead of wasting my money, I'll just come in, experiment on GitHub's money, and then figure out which model is going to be what I want to work with on my app. Yeah, exactly. If we give you stuff for free, then why would you pay for it? Hey developers, welcome to GitHub Checkout, your inside look at the new features and updates that level up your workflows. I'm Andrea Griffiths, Senior Developer Advocate. Today, we're diving into the world of GitHub models. Joining us is Damian Brady, Staff Developer Advocate at GitHub, who's here to show us exactly how you can incorporate GitHub models into your projects. Damian, thank you for joining us today. Let's start with basics. What exactly are GitHub models? There are millions of foundation models, small language models, and large language models around there, and it can be a bit tricky to work out which ones you should use. So GitHub models is a nice way of letting you experiment and compare and try all of the different models and then gives you an easy on-ramp to actually include them in your applications. That's amazing. So what kind of models are available through the GitHub platform? There are a lot. If you go down to Marketplace, and then the marketplace is things like Copilot and models and apps and actions. But if you click on models and the catalog, you can see the catalog of all of the different models. So there's recently added ones. We added O4 Mini, uh, Cohere Embed, 4 Cohere Command A, so on. But there's a huge number, like you can see me scrolling down, and that's page one of probably more than three, actually. We've got GPT-4.1, which is super new as well. So if we wanted to try GPT-4.1, I can just click on it and it will give me kind of an, a playground area or a, a bit more information. I can find out, you know, read the readme, um, transparency information about how it was trained and things like that, uh, even like the licensing to, to show how to use it. Let's just like really quickly try it. So if we just said something like, you know, something we would generally want to know in an application, like the concept of time dilation in physics, um, but we can see it running. We're basically just sending a request out and getting a re that request back. And we can type in new responses, or we can even use these kind of quick menus as well to say, make response cheaper. And it will give us a suggestion of which models might be cheaper than that, which is handy, or make it faster and same deal. You can also get it to do things like you know, cite the sources in the response. So in this case, it should give me links to where it's found this information, which is quite cool. So how would a developer move from experimenting into actually integrating this into whatever they're building? So there's a few different ways. One is just these tabs over here. So you can see the code tab and it gives you some really basic, you know, here's how you would do it for REST using curl. But if you wanted to do it in Python, here's the Python code. And so this is kind of the simplest way. It's even like a copy the clipboard button using Azure AI or OpenAI SDK, um, C Sharp. You know, there's a bunch of different languages. If you do want to use it in production, then the use this model button gives you a bit more information. If you want to try it with code, like with a dev environment, you can even click run code space and it will bring up a code space with a template that has all of the things you need to actually start getting up and running. The next one is the compare button. We can actually run these things right next to each other. So if I wanted to clear all this and then say something like, can you tell me about this city? And we want to sync that between the two models that we're comparing. So it's going to give it the same Thing. So Brisbane, Australia, and you can see it's typing it in both. And yeah, you can see 4.1 seemed to be a little bit faster, um, but they've both given decent results. Once you have chosen a model, sometimes your prompt is not giving you exactly what you want. So this is, is getting a little bit meta. We're going to use AI to improve the prompt for the AI that we're using. So it, let, me, let me show you. Uh, tell me about this the city, Brisbane, Australia, run that. You can see what the response is. Okay, that's cool. Let's say we want JSON back and we don't want this much information. Like that's a lot. And so here's our current prompt. And we could say something like, I want a response in JSON and then ask it to improve the prompt. So clicking the button and it will use AI to go and make a suggestion for an improved prompt that we can run and there we go. So yeah, super cool. All right, that is really practical. What else is new in GitHub models? Yeah, so like pretty much everything in AI, it's moving really fast. The easiest way to find out what's new is on the changelog. So github.blog slash changelog. And if you look in the models tab, it gives you what models have become available. But the one I really like is this GitHub Actions token integration. Basically says, you know that GitHub token that you get? 
you can just use that now in GitHub Actions and just make requests to GitHub models as part of your actions. So what I did, I created a little thing for my fancy Node app. I want it to give me a bit more, like give some suggestions about how I could make it prettier. And to do that, I can call one of the OpenAI models as part of GitHub Actions. So when I create that issue, it runs an action and it does that work. So to do that, I just wrote a bunch of scripts. All we're doing is doing a curl request to GitHub models. So models.github.ai, and we're passing in the GitHub token, which we just get as part of GitHub Actions. So to show you, I'm just going to create a new issue and say something like, choose some icons for the page. And it's pretty boring on the profile page. And when I create that issue, what the GitHub Actions uh, workflow will do is first it'll pick it up and say, I'm going to have a look at it. So in a sec, when we see it running, we can see it'll respond with a little um, emoji. There you go. So this is GitHub Actions running. And that Actions workflow that I show you just throws this out to OpenAI and says, look, here's some ideas. So a subtle animation effect, maybe a theme switcher, customizable icons. And here's how you could improve the description. So this literally took me about 20 minutes from scratch. I didn't need to think about any indication. All I did was pass in that GitHub Actions token. Yeah, really easy to get started with this stuff. What are some ways that you're seeing developers use GitHub models? So I think most of the time it's an experimentation phase. So mm -hmm. there's so many models getting released all the time. Um, every day. <laughs> every day, yeah. Um, I mean, you saw the, the change log that we were looking through, like half of them are, here's a new model, here's some new models. This one's deprecated in favor of this new one. So constantly having to keep up to date with what the models are, um, how to use them and what they cost and comparing them to each other to work out which ones give you the responses you want and which ones don't. That's really useful, just sitting in the playground and playing with those. The way that they're using it in the end is that they're, they're using it to experiment. And then because it's so easy just to grab that and start using it in your application, it means that you can try and use it for all sorts of things. I mean, a lot of what I've seen is doing things like summarizing issues or summarizing pages or creating bedtime stories for my kids. Um, so they give me a couple of ideas and I, I shoot that out and that gives me a story aimed at a five-year-old, which is quite cool. So instead of wasting my money when I'm trying to like a proof of concept for something, I'll just come in, experiment on GitHub's money, and then figure out which model is going to be what I want to work with on my app. I love it. This yeah. is awesome. Yeah, exactly. If we give you stuff for free, then why would you pay for it? So one of the things we saw was the details um, of the different models and the rate limit. So we saw like there's a high tier limit for this particular model. If you click on that tier limit, the high limit, it takes you to our docs, which tells you how much you get for free. So the Copilot free, you know, if it's low, you get 15 a day. If it's high, you get 10. So you can find out how much you can play with it. Thank you, Damien. I appreciate you showing us GitHub models. Of course. Happy to be here. And that was your first look at GitHub models. If this was helpful, hit the like button and subscribe to GitHub's YouTube channel for more feature updates and dev tips. Push the changes to main and we'll catch you in the next release.